Have you ever heard about the Polyglot Conference where so many language enthusiasts will gather together and exchange knowledge and of course languages? <laughs> and today is going to be one of the most special days in my life that I'm going to meet my favorite polyglot in the world. I even have his picture on my vision board in my laptop screen. And he is Richard Simcott, the founder and organizer of Polyglot Conference who has often appeared on global media. Hello, I'm Richard Simcott, and I'm the founder of the Polyglot Conference. And I love languages, and I've studied over 50 of them myself. Hello everyone, I'm here with the famous polyglot Richard Simcott and I'm just so happy he's has been my idol for so long and Richard is the organizer of polyglot conference and many other language events as well as appearing global media First of all, I'm very curious, when did you start learning your first additional language? I guess, and it sounds very silly to say a difficult question for something so sounds so easy but I guess I was around five I, I always say French was the first language I started learning at school for example and I think probably that's the right answer to, to give but I, I had language influences from even earlier and just because of dialect and standardized language and things like that so there were, there were lots of things going on I think how many languages have you studied studied over 50 this also becomes quite complicated which which languages people consider as languages and this is all very very complex yeah. i really want to ask for example if you pick up a new language how do you study it depends what's available so i i love classes i like interacting with other people i like going on a journey with other people as well for me languages are a social thing we, we use them for social reasons whether it's be friendships or whether it's business or whatever it is we use them because we want to connect with the people unless it's obviously you want to be a polymath or you want to just read the language but then you're still also connecting to people through history through their words mm -hmm. through their books through their stories so yeah i'm going to stick with you communicate with people but there's a problem that I think a lot of people, when they learn a new language, they are trying to master the grammars, mm -hmm. the writing, the reading first, and then after when they feel, oh, I know so much, and now I go out and talk to other people. What do you think about that approach? It's kind of perfectionism, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I mean, you're going to make mistakes anyway. I can guarantee that you make mistakes in, in your own language. Yep. So I make mistakes in English. Everyone, you'll make mistakes in Vietnamese. Uh, I don't really need to speak Vietnamese to be able to tell you that. I, I can guarantee that you're not going to speak perfect Vietnamese. And I definitely don't speak perfect English 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. Of course, that doesn't change the way we speak. We are still competent speakers of our languages. It's just human. It's, it's human to make mistakes. Are you trying to practice and speaking to other people right when you started to learn a language? Or are you going to wait until you feel more comfortable with your speaking? Oh no, I love, I love to use languages as soon as I possibly can, particularly because you need the practice of repetition to repeat the words. Language learning really is um, over-learning. You have to learn things to a point that it becomes automatic. That's why I always think it's good to use what you know. Many people struggle to find the motivation mm -hmm. to maintain the language or keep learning, keep studying mm -hmm. the language. They can be really, like, we excited at the beginning, I'm going to be the polyglot, yeah. I'm going to be speak Thai, I'm going to learn how to speak the Slavic, and then, mm -hmm. nah, I gave up on that. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about how people can find motivation and maintain them? Motivation is very personal. Also, reality checks are very important to find out what, why, why, why are you doing that? What's the end goal here? It can sound cool to do things um, in life generally. But actually, what are the practical implications? A butterfly is beautiful to see outside. If you keep it in a small cage and you don't ever let it go outside, it will just fade and die. So enjoy it while it's flying. This is kind of where I think languages also have a similar thing. Whereas if you're planning to just keep it in a box at home, to say, I've got this cool box at home with this thing in, it's not really a great motivation because it dies very quickly. So you really need to have a realistic thing of, actually, no, I'm going to use this and how often, and when, and where, and who with, and all these things. Because the reality will bite eventually. 
Yeah, so go back. You cannot just stock up a lot of knowledge and not using them, but just go out and try to use that language and associate yeah. it with a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, it's not a, it's not a CV where you add a list and you just keep adding more to the list. You actually have to use these things. It's unfortunately, yeah. I mean, as exciting as it can be to learn lots of languages, it's not necessarily necessary for everyone to learn every language all of the time. Sometimes our lives just don't allow for certain things. I mean, I would love to have been an African elephant. Unfortunately, I don't have the ears for it. <laughs> so, how can you overcome the unfamiliar grammars and unfamiliar alphabet? It's it's exposure. I mean, it's repetition and exposure. Language learning is over learning. You have to see things and hear things and use things often for it to become normal and automatic for you to be able to use it well. If you're not, if you put zero in, you're definitely going to get zero out. You have to at least put one in to even stand the chance of getting half out. The same, this, this sort of that rule applies to learning either scripts, learning words, using the language, learning the the, the grammar, the vocabulary, because you could. You can even learn a language to a basic level and just use that basic level all the time. Because if it's functional, it might just be what you need. You may not need any more. It might be enough for you to be able to get around town. Do you need to talk about what's going on politically, economically, or with the environment in that language with the people you're using that language with? Maybe you're only using it with the local shopkeeper, and you go in and you need to know what bread and milk are in the language. Maybe that's all you need. And so it's very important to kind of have a reality check. When do I get the chance to use this language to the level I want to use it? Or can I create that ability by learning the language? And if so, then you have to start integrating ways to develop the language conversations that you're having to take the language further forward. Is it very important for a person who moved to a new country to learn the language and the culture of that country, or is okay? I, I, I personally feel that if you move to somebody else's country, you you should make an effort to learn the language of the people. Otherwise, how on earth do you understand the mentality, the way society works? Because you definitely can't get that through translation in the same way. So there are certain things that people say that indicate how the culture has developed, and therefore how people act and interact on a daily basis. You should have respect for your host nation. If if you if you go to somebody's house, would you walk in the door and just sit down and treat it like your own home, or would you greet the people who are there and pay them respect? As far as I'm concerned, really, you should pay some level of respect. If you're going for a short trip, maybe it's just hello and thank you, because it's also unreasonable to expect people to learn an entire language for a week or two weeks in the country. But at the same time, if you're going to be there for a year and make that your home, then. Paying the minimum respect of learning at least to get around and know what the foods are, knowing how to ask for directions, yeah. knowing how to greet people. I'm not talking about you have to be able to read their most difficult literature. Definitely to be able to not be completely mute when it gets to the point of you know, someone greeting you and, and saying, "Excuse me, do you know where the bathroom is?" And you saying, "Sorry, I don't speak your language," and you've lived there for for 15 years. It's kind of a bit absurd. You should be able to say, "Yeah, it's on the left, just over there." I think there's also a, a huge benefit of being able to live in another country, so that you learn a language and then you adapt to the culture to expand yourself mm. and your identity and your life. Yeah. Okay, I, this is very quite controversial, but I want to ask you. There are a lot of people saying that, "Oh, everyone should just study English, so that we don't have any language barriers, and just go on and study English." What do you think about that for those people who have that idea? Look, I mean, English is an international language. Mm -hmm. There's no. I'm not going to pretend that the elephant in the room is not there. The mm -hmm. elephant in the room is there. Mm -hmm. I've got eyes. I can see. I've got ears. I can hear. English is the international language. It's the main language that people learn as a second language nowadays in most countries around the world. People want to speak English. As an English speaker, if I go somewhere, people want to practice their English with me. And many, many English speakers around the world will have a very similar experience. It's one of the things that is a frustration. For many English speakers, when they're learning foreign languages, because people prefer to speak English to practice their English, because it's either expensive to travel, they don't get to meet them that often, and they want to improve it so that they can get a better job in their own countries. They they can travel as well more easily. They can make friends, meet people, understand things online, because so many things online are in English. So pretending that English isn't important for many people would not be fair to those people, and would also be Disingenuous from my 
point of view. I mean, should everyone learn English? I think it's a sad thing to say yes. It's sad from a personal point of view of someone who loves languages. Is it a useful tool? Absolutely. Does that mean that we still shouldn't learn languages? Absolutely not. Because even if everybody does learn English and everyone can speak English, do we always then have to use English in every context? No. But it is a handy tool to do business with people from abroad. As sad as I find it, I recognize the utility. But there's also other aspects of the language that we should learn it. For example, heritage approach. There are a lot of people lose their heritage by not speaking the language. Do you need a lot of learning this? Which is why I think, you know, for me, uh, as somebody who champions indigenous, endangered and vulnerable languages and having learned my heritage language myself, Welsh. What are your heritage languages? My heritage language is Welsh. Okay. So I, I had to go back and even though I had Welsh words in my English from childhood, I had to go back to learn the language properly to be able to use it to communicate. I, I recognize the importance of that. Not every individual in the world who has a heritage language uh, will feel the same way either. So there are people who will say, well, I don't care. I, this is the language I speak now. Who cares what language people spoke in the past? There are people that have that point of view as well. But also there are people who will feel that they need to feel a deep connection. The people who came before them were learn the language and understand how the flow of the culture went through the language. I think speaking English and learning English doesn't necessarily have to affect that, but it can. There's also other aspect of learning language is going to bring to us rather than just communication. Yeah. It's morning connection. It's like about connection. Like I say, if you if you go to a country and let's say you speak English, for example, I could go to Vietnam. When I went to Vietnam, I I did learn how to say like hello and thank you and things like that. Just very basic Vietnamese words. And then I had to rely on English, unfortunately. But other countries, maybe you might learn a bit more. You might learn a bit less, but. If you, even if you're going to use English as your as your language, just to learn those few words as a, tra a traveler mm -hmm. is always nice. But if you're going to stay longer, absolutely learn the language. And if it's part of your heritage, I think it can be a very therapeutic thing to do to go back and rediscover language. Even though you don't find many people speaking that language? Why not? It doesn't always have to be to do with direct communication with people in your community. It could just be a thing where you learn it and you feel good about learning it. Why do we learn anything, you know? Why do we learn about hi history, geography, science? Some people will learn more, some people will learn less. But if it makes you feel good learning the bit that you've learned, it's still good. You actually feel way better and connect better to your heritage after or the, during the journey of learning well. I think so, because you imagine how people spoke, right? And you imagine in some f funny way, you know, my great, 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 great grandparents or my great grandparents or whatever, they, they're going to think, well, this is how, these are the words that they used. There's something quite special about that. So last thing, if for those people who are learning languages right now and they on the edge of giving up mm -hmm. <laughs> by not finding motivation, what advice that you have for them or what words you can say to them? Take a piece of paper, write down why you're learning the language, what you like about the language, what you already know, because that will show you how far you've come, what you want to achieve next. So if you can already talk about yourself, your family, where you're from, what else do you want to talk about in the language? Ask yourself those questions because that will determine then what you learn next. And then the next time you take a piece of paper, you'll see how far you've come the next time as well. So keep doing that periodically, every couple of weeks, even every week if you like, and see what you can do. Look back, always reflect back on what you've done. So you need to know what you're going to write and what you're going to learn, and then do it every day. Do at least a bit every day. 15 minutes is a bare minimum. <laughs> you can like play thing and learn with the app so that more fun okay. <laughs> to maintain it. <laughs> you do you is what I'm saying. Okay. You do you. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you so much, Richard, thank for you. being here and then having the conversation with me. I mean, can I give you a hug? Yeah, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> my, my pleasure. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nay, I cannot believe that I just had a conversation with Richard. It's really motivated me to learn more and become a polyglot as well. And I really hope that you can learn some from him too. May our language journeys this year will take off and may we will be strong and disciplined enough to overcome all the challenges, I mean laziness. And if you feel like having some fun, download link app to play some language game. And of course, learning languages can be really entertaining as well. See you in the next video.